India being the cradle of one of the oldest civilization in the world has a tradition that is embedded in the science and technology a science and technology an ancient Indian land well balanced the wisdom and knowledge of sages and seers of research and researchers of scholars scientists whose scientific knowledge is preserved in the Vedas Ayurveda and other ancient Granths today many centuries later and the 75 years after achieving independence India has come a long way as she gears up to provide and deploy high-tech solutions in several key areas including education healthcare transport etc to all citizens reaching even to the marginalized communities the traveling back in the time along the eventful lane of India's science and technology ecosystem flashes into the minds and I several my, uh, milestones that directed our nation to the significant global position that we are today. The star words who has stand out include Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, who initiated several reforms in higher education and science and technology and was particularly instrumental in setting up the Indian Institute of Technology. The first one was inaugurated in 19. 51 at IIT, that is called IIT Kharagpur. Uh, Dr. Mola, the contribution of Dr. Mohan Ajaz cannot be ignored when we talk about development of science. India propelled herself into the domain and space right from the 1960s and through diplomatic ties with the Soviet Union, planted the seed of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, simultaneously advancing nuclear capability the Einstein said, we owe a lot to the ancient Indians teaching us how to count, without which most modern scientific discoveries would have been impossible. So if that is the saying of Einstein, then certainly we have to justify this saying. Uh, these are, are some of the Indian scientists uh, who have contributed a lot for uh, development of science in India, which we, if we start from the left hand side, Jagdish Tindbos, Prakulchat, Dr. P. C. Ray, Satyan Boss, Meghnath Saha, P. C. Mahalonimis, uh, <coughs> then G. C. Bhattacharya, Anand Mohan Chakravarti, Subhash Mukhopadhyay, Dr. C. V. Raman, Dr. Hargovind Khurana, Homi Jangi Baba, Vikram Sarabhai, Subramanam Chandra Sekar, Srinivas Ramanujan, Dr. Ashok Sain, a leading uh, mathematician, Dr. Sankar Chatterjee, uh, Dr. Venki Ramakrishnan, Jayanth Narlikar, Dr. Kalam, and many more. So, one of the oldest civilizations in the world, the Indian uh, civilization has a strong tradition of science and technology. Ancient India ha was a land of sages, as I said, and seers as well as a land of scholars and scientists. And the research has shown that from making the best steel in the world to teaching the world to count, India was actively contributing to the field of science and technology centuries long before modern laboratories were set up. Many theories and techniques discovered by the ancient Indians have created and strengthened the fundamentals of modern science and technology, while some of these groundbreaking contributions have been acknowledged and some are still unknown to most. I am a teacher in Delhi University for almost uh, uh, four decades and I am take pride in telling that there are several stalwarts in the country, in this university, who have been instrumental in shaping this Indian science. And one of them is Dr. Shantisru Bhattagar, who was head department of chemistry in University of Delhi during 1941 to 44. And during this period, he was able to establish CSIR or many other laboratories. Similarly, Dr. D.S. Kothari was a professor of reader in physics and professor in physics and head department of physics. He was instrumental in developing DRDO from the same buildings here. The DRDO, CSIR and many other lab, IC, uh, ICMR and IARI, they were developed from the old chemistry and physics department buildings uh, where the departments are housed today. So in the past more than seven decades, India has built satellites and sent probes to moon and Mars, established nuclear power stations, acquired nuclear weapon capability 
and demonstrated far firepower in the form of a range of missiles and at the same time the scientific research combined with the favorable public policies has made india self sufficient in production of the food milk fruits and vegetables drugs and vaccines and all this has had great social and economic impact and directly and indirectly touched the lives of ordinary indians development in the communications and information technology have enabled timely forecast of weather and early warning of cyclones saving thousands of lives uh, these are all results of investment made in scientific research soon after the independence and science politics network built in decades prior to that investment in scientific research was 0.1% gdp uh, in 1947 then it went up to 0.5% in less than a decade scientists like santosh rubatnagar dr baba pc mahanavesh not only built scientific institution but also helped and shape the scientific policies uh thus i will just mention 16 significant science and technological discovery that ancient india gave to the world in that if you see the the first one the idea of zero nobody in the world knew what is zero and little needs to be written about the mathematical digit zero one of the most important inventions of all time mathematician aryabhatta was the first person to create a symbol of zero and it was through his efforts and mathematical operations like addition and subtraction he started using the digit zero the second i'll give you the second is the decimal system the decimal system india gave the indigenous method of expressing all numbers by means of the ten symbols the decimal system due to the simplicity of the decimal notation which facilitated calculation and this system made the usage of arithmetic in practical inventions much faster and easier so this is a very major contribution of india for the development of science and mathematical science all over the globe then numeral notations india or the indians as early as 500 bc had devised a system of different symbols for every number from 1 to 9 and this notation system was adopted by the arabs who called it the hind hind numericals numerals and centuries later this notation system was adopted by the western world who called them the arabic numerals as it reached them through the arab traders the fourth is the fibonacci num numbers so these fibonacci numbers and the sequence first appear in indian mathematics as a matra meru which was mentioned by pingala in connection with the sanskrit tradition of prosody and later on the methods for the formation of these numbers were given by the mathematician viranka gopala and hemchandra much before the italian mathematician fibonacci introduced the fascinating sequence to western european mathematics so this is a major contribution of in india then binary numbers the binary numbers is the basic language in which the computer programs are written binary basically refers to a set of two numbers 1 and 0 and then the combinations of which are called bits and bytes the binary number system was first described by the vedic scholar pingala in his book chanda shastra which is earliest known sanskrit treatise for prosody the study of poetic meters and verse the sixth is the chakravala method of algorithm this chakravala method is a cyclic algorithm algorithm to solve indeterminate quadratic equations including the pell's equation and this method for obtaining integral solutions was developed by brahmagupta one of the well known mathematicians of the 7th century 7th century sorry 7th century ce another mathematician jadeva later generalized this method for a wider range of equation which was further refined by bhaskara 2 in his 
Vijagencha Tritej. Then the seventh, the ruler measurements. The excavation, uh, the excavations at Harappan sites have yielded rulers or linear measures made from ivory and shell. Marked out the minute division, subdivisions with amazing accuracy, the calibrations correspond closely with the hushed increments of 13 oblique 8 inches and traditionally used in the ancient architecture of South India. And ancient bricks found at the excavation site have dimensions that correspond to the units on the rulers. So the, the ruler, now we say 12 inch, it used to be 13 inch in the uh, earlier days. Eight, eight is the, the theory of atom. Mary C. Kanat. Mary C. Kanat was one of the notable scientists of ancient India who said to uh, who said and devised the atomic theory centuries much before the John Dalton was born. He speculated the existence of Anu or a small indestructible particle much like an atom. He also stated that Anu can have two states, absolute rest and state of motion. Today we call them in science excited state. So state of motion. He further held that atoms of the same substance combined with each other in a specific and synchronized manner to produce tenka, diatomic molecules and trenka, triatomic molecules. So these are both the discoveries which are long ago India has given. Then heliocentric theory. The mathematicians of the ancient India often applied their mathematical knowledge to mark, make accurate astronomical predictions. The most significant among them was Aryabhatta, whose book Aryabhatiya represented the pinnacle of the astronomical knowledge at the time. He correctly propounded that earth is round and it rotates on its axis and revolve around the sun. So that was the discovery of India and that is the heliocentric theory. He also made predictions about the solar and the lunar eclipses. Duration of the day as well as distance between the earth and the moon. So much before the world knew about it, our mathematicians, the scientists, they discovered this uh, advanced science. So tenth age puts steel, a pioneering steel alloy matrix developed in India, that is a wood steel, is a crucible steel characterized by a pattern of bands that was known in ancient world by many different names such as Uku, Hindwani and Sirikar. It was produced, uh, produced by the Tamils of the Chira dynasty, then the finest steel of the ancient world was made by heating black magnetite ore in the presence of the carbon in a sealed clay crucible which was kept inside a charcoal furnace. So this was a discovery of India. Then zinc. Smelting of zinc was a great discovery of India. It, India was the first to smelt zinc by distillation process, an advanced technique derived from a long experience of an ancient alchemy. The ancient Persians has also attempted to reduce zinc oxide in an open furnace but had failed. Jawar in the Tiri Valley in Rajasthan is the world's first known ancient zinc smelting site. The distillation technique of the zinc production goes back to the 12th century AD and is an important contribution of India to the world of science. The 12th, I say, seamless metal globe. It is considered one of the most remarkable feats in metallurgy. The first seamless celestial globe was made in Kashmir by Ali Kashmiri ibn Luqman in the reign of Emperor Akbar. In a major feat in metallurgy, Mughal metallurgists pioneered the method of lost wax 
casting to make 20 other globe masterpieces in the reign of mughal empire before these globes were rediscovered in 1980s the modern metallurgist believed that it was technically impossible to produce metal globes without any seams even with modern technology so there was a technology there was no seam in the globe then the plastic surgery we have heard by susurta written by susurta in the 6th century bc susurta samhita is considered to be the one of the most comprehensive textbook on ancient surgery the text mentions various illness plants preparations and cures along with complex techniques of the plastic surgery and the susurta samhita most well known contribution to the plastic surgery is the reconstruction of the nose known also as rhinoplasty so there was all discovery of india then india was much ahead in the surgery the cataract surgery the first cataract surgery is said to have been performed by the ancient indian physician susurta way back in 6th century bc to remove the cataract from the eye he used a curved needle and called it a jaba mukhi slaka to loosen the lens and push the cataract out of the field of vision the eye would then be bandaged for a few days till it healed completely and susurta's sur- surgical works were later translated to arabic language and through the arabs his work were into introduced to the west ayurveda long before the birth of hippocrates charak samhita or the charak authored a foundational text fundamental text book the charak samhita on the ancient science of ayurveda referred to as the father of indian medicine charak was the first physician to present the concept of digestion metabolism immunity in his book the charaka's ancient manual on preventive medicine remained a standard work on this subject for 2 millennia as translated into many foreign languages including arabic and latin 16th and the last uh, the sorry other discovery 16th and last which is completely very recent the first iron case rocket was developed in 1780s by team sultan of mysore who successfully used these rockets against the larger forces of the british east india company during the anglo mysore wars he crafted long iron tubes filled them with gunpowder and fastened them to bamboo poles to create the predecessor of the modern jets rocket sorry modern rocket with a range of about 2 km these rockets were the best in the world at that time and caused as much fear and confusion as damage so this is this is 16 um, uh, discoveries i said which india made much before the the, uh, the, the science in western countries developed. then we had few scientists who got nobel prize they made a larger contribution and incidentally let me i'm um, coming back uh, uh, the because the british india was pakistan and india together and some of the institutions like government college lahore which is now uh, is a, uh, it was made university in 2002 but it was a college so at least i know how many them people who are the great scientists this college has given har gobind khurana abdul salam chandrasekhar those they have been recognized some unsung heroes like gurubak singh sukhdev they all came from the same college so indian science was developed in the northern part of the of india british india and also some other uh, west bengal the chennai all these places are where the indian science developed this ronald ross he is a born indian he was born in almora now in uttarakhand in 
Ronald Rose was the first person to get a Nobel Prize in 1902 because Nobel Prize started in 1901. So Ronald Rose, the, he was a British medical doctor, but he was born in India. He was working in Calcutta. He was working in Simla. He got the Nobel Prize for his discovery in 1902 for his work on the transmission of malaria because this malaria experiments he carried out in Calcutta. And he became the first British Nobel laureate, and the first born outside Europe. He was born in Almora. And his discovery of the malaria parasite in the gastrointestinal tract of the mosquito in 1897 proved that malaria was transmitted by mosquitoes and laid the foundation for the method of combating the disease. So it was, uh, it was an unchallengeable disease, but now the malaria is under control in India. Then the second is, uh, we talk about Dr. Raman, C. V. Raman. He was born in 1888 and died very early in 1970. He was an Indian physicist known for his work in the field of light spectrum. He, he used a spectrograph that he developed and that he developed was with the help of K. S. Krishnan. K. S. Krishnan incidentally was a professor of physics in Delhi University. K. S. Krishnan was the first person who was appointed first director of National Physical Laboratory in the uh, house in physics department of Delhi University. So the KS Krishnan discovered that when light traverses a transparent material, the deflected light changes its wavelength and frequency. Dr. Raman was not a scientist originally, he was a revenue officer. And this phenomenon, the hitherto unknown type of scattering of light, which they called modified scattering, was subsequently termed as Raman effect or Raman scattering. For this, Dr. C. V. Raman got Nobel Prize in 1930 in, for physics for his discovery and was first Asian to receive a Nobel Prize in any branch of science. Dr. Khurana, with whom I have been closely associated, Har Gomen Khurana, he, he has been one of my mentors and he is a great man. The Qurana, as I said, he was also from Government College Lahore. Professor Gurwak Singh, the founder of Vice Chancellor of Central University of Hyderabad and Vice Chancellor of University of Delhi during 80 to 85, and Dr. Qurana, Dr. Sukhdev. They used to work in Government College Lahore with Dr. Man Singh, and they published four papers, five papers together, which are present today in the Museum of the MIT in US. So, Dr. Kurana basically developed his interest for science when he was not recognized in India. He told me several times that he cried when he wanted a job in India, came to the Department of Chemistry at University of Delhi and the then federal department was so powerful, Maurice Blair used to be the vice chancellor, they did not appoint him a lecture. lecturer. Anyway, Dr. Kurana Dr. Gurbak Singh, Abdul Salam, the 50, 100 students were selected by Pandit Nehru in different disciplines, not only science. A.R. Kidwai, who was the UPSC chairman for 12 years and governor for 18 years, they all were together. They were sent by ship to study in UK and USA. Dr. Kurana incidentally wanted to go to US, but for some reason, he he go down in UK and he did his PhD in UK. And Professor Gurbak Singh and uh, Dr. Kidwai and other people, uh, they went to uh, do their PhD in US. Dr. Kidwai did his PhD from Cornell Medical College. Professor Gurbak Singh did his PhD from Harvard, Harvard University. So these, these were the people who in those days laid the foundation of the science in this country or around the world. So Dr. Hrana was he shared the 1968 Nobel Prize for Physiological Medicine when he was a professor at the University of Wisconsin. Before that, he worked in Canada. He was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Cambridge. He went to Switzerland, where he got married uh, while he was there. So his basic work was nucleotide and nucleic acid, which carried the genetic code of the cell and controlled the cells, uh, controlled the cells, synthesis of the proteins, and Kurana and Nuremberg were also awarded the Lucia Gross Hovitz Prize 
from the Columbia University in the same year. So this is Dr. Kurana, who visited our institute, a medical center for biomedical research, sometime in 2000, 2001. So this is a great discovery of Dr. Kurana, which he, uh, inspired the younger generation of India. Dr. Subramanian. Dr. Subramanian Chandrasekhar was also a student of the uh, Government College Lahore. He was an Indian American astrophysicist. He was a nephew of Dr. C. V. Raman. He spent his professional life in the US, but he started he start his career from the same college where Dr. Prana, Abdul Salam, Gurbak Singh, they started. He was awarded the 1983 Nobel Prize for Physics with William A. Fowler for theoretical studies of the physical processes of importance to the structure and evolution of the stars. His mathematical treatment of the stellar evolution yielded many of the current theoretical models of the later evolutionary stages of massive stars and black holes. So this theory of black holes, basically, it was Chandrasekhar who started and later on uh, the other scientists in UK have taken over the story. And the Chandrasekhar limit is named after him. It's a phenomenon, the Chandrasekhar limit. Our, another friend who is very active scientist in today, Venki Ramakrishnan, Venki uh, basically started his career at Mamsi Mamsi Baroda. So Venki, due to some, as we Indians, you know, try to harass people who are creative, who can think out of box, so as he was harassed. And he left this country. And I'm really lucky to have associated all the relationship and association with him. And Venki is an Indian born, he, he was a was born in India, studied at Mamsi Mamsi Baroda, and he's a British American because he has just five British passport and American passport. He's a special biologist to share the 2009 Nobel Prize in chemistry with Thomas Sage and Ada Yuna. Ada Yuna is a dynamic lady uh, for studies of the structure and function of the ribosomes. And since 1999, he has worked as a group leader at Medical Research Council laboratory of the molecular biology in Cambridge University, UK and is a fellow of the Trinity College, Cambridge and Benke was the president of the Royal Society, UK from 2015 to 2020. So these are the Indian scientists who are contributing. So if you see this, we were together uh, two, two years ago uh, in a meeting in Japan. So this is a picture I'm sharing with you. So the, there are some leaders. Uh, unfortunately, some of them are no more. But uh, uh, like I was talking about Dr. Bhatnagar. Dr. Bhatnagar was head uh, uh, head Department of Chemistry during 1941 to 43, and during this period, Dr. Bhatnagar persuaded the government to set up an industrial research utilization committee for translating results into application. If somebody tried to approach the government today, probably the vice chancellor will punish him. The government then agreed to make a separate fund out of the royalties received from industry for further investment into the industrial research and the constitution of the Council of Scientific Research as an autonomous body was prepared under the leadership of Sir Arkot Ramaswamy Mudaliar and Dr. Bhatnagar while he was working as the head department of Kansas State University of Delhi. The CSIR came into operation on 26 September 1942 from a laboratory which is now part of the Department of Chemistry at University of Delhi. The BSIR and uh, IRUC were incorporated into the advisory bodies of the governing body of CSIR. And in 1943, the governing body of CSIR approved the proposal of Dr. Bernagar to establish few more laboratories. And who, which were those laboratories? National Physical Laboratory, which was established, as I told you, under the leadership of K.S. Krishnan in the Department of Physics at the University of Delhi, and also the National Chemical, Chemical Laboratory in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Delhi. The Fuel Research Station, the Glass and Ceramic Research Institute, Calcutta, and National Metallurgical Laboratory. So these were the initial steps Dr. Bhatnagar started 
the development of science from telegnostic campus. Then, Homi Baba. Homi Baba played an important role in the quantum theory. He was the first person to become the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Having started his scientific career in the nuclear physics from the Great, Great Britain, Baba returned to India and played a key role in convincing the Congress Party senior leaders, including Pandit Nehru, to start the ambitious nuclear program. And Baba is generally acknowledged as the father of Indian nuclear power. But few people know that he was absolutely against India manufacturing atomic bombs. Even if the country had enough resources to do so. So instead he suggested that the production of an atomic, atomic reactor should be used to lessen India's misery and poverty. So that was the contribution of Baba. Then there is a great scientist, again, engineer basically, Sir Vishwasaraya. Vishwasaraya was a notable Indian engineer. He was a scholar, a statesman, and the Divan of the Mysore during 1912 to 1918. He was a recipient of India's Republic's highest honor, Bharat Ratna. And Dr. Vishwasaraya suggested that India tried to be at par with the industrialized nations as he believed that India can become developed through the industries. He has the credit of inventing automatic sluice gates and block irrigation system in canal, which are still considered to be marvels in engineering. So we celebrate 15th September as Engineers Day in his memory. And since the river beds were costly, he came up with an efficient way of filtering water through collector wells in 1895, which was rarely seen anywhere in the world. We had Venki Radhakrishnan. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2011. So, Venki Raman was globally renowned space scientist and a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. He was an internationally acclaimed astrophysicist and also known for his design and fabrication of ultralight, aircraft, and sailboats. His observations and theoretical insights helped the community in unraveling many mysteries surrounding pulsars, interstellar clouds, galaxy structures, and various other celestial bodies. We had a known name. Satyendranath Bose. Satyendranath Bose was basically a physicist who specialized in quantum mechanics. He is, of course, the most remembered for his role played in the class of the particles, boson, which is a major project for the world today, boson. 135 countries are participating in this joint project, boson. And it was named after him, Bos, boson, by whole direct to commemorate his work in this field. And Bos, Chatena Bos, directed a lecture at the University of Dhaka on the theory of radiation and ultraviolet catastrophe into this short article called Prank Law and Hypothesis of Light Quanta. And he sent it to Einstein to have his uh, suggestions and ideas. The Einsteins agreed with him and translated Chatendra's Bose paper himself in English in, in 1924 and this formed the basis of the Bose Einstein statistics. In 1937, Rabindranath Tagore dedicated his only book to, on science, that is a wish paraki, to S.N. Bose and the government of India awarded him the second highest award, this was in 1954. So then, you see another scientist, a great scientist, Meghnatsa. He comes from Bangladesh now, the, uh, the east, uh, uh, eastern part of the West Bengal. So Meghnatsa, best known work concerned the thermal ionization of elements. And it led him to formulate what is known as Saha equation. And this equation is one of the basic tools for interpretation of the spectra of a star in astrophysics. 
by studying the spectra of various stars one can find the temperature and from that using sahaj equation determine the ionization state of various elements making up the star he also invented he also invented an instrument to measure the weight and pressure of the solar rays but no you do not may not be knowing he was also the chief architect of the river planning in india he prepared the original plan for the damodar valley project incidentally dr meghnath sah comes from a very poor family and the so called down trodden families of west bengal or east bengal in those days so if you see his biography how he grew up he used to work when he was studying his father was not able able to support his studies then our next hero is ramanujan srinivas ramanujan he was an indian mathematician and auto direct nobody taught him he learned himself without any formal training in pure mathematics he made extraordinary contribution to mathematical analysis number theory infinite series and continued fractions at the age of 11 he had exhausted the mathematical knowledge of two college students who were loggers at his home he was later lent a book on advanced trigonometry which was written by s l loney and he completely mastered this book by the age of 13 and discovered sophisticated theorems on his own we do not know we have, we didn't know before that he faced a lot of health problems while living in england and due to his scarcity of vegetarian food so ramanujan returned to the his home state tamil nadu and his contribution was so well known that we celebrate 22nd december as ramanujan birthday and this is also called iit day we memorize both man and his human this is the contribution of ramanujan there is a physicist this man is a physicist is a biologist is a chemist is a botanist archaeologist satyendra satish chandra bos again comes from bengal presidency like uh, others he was a man of many talents he was a poly mathematician he was a physicist he was a biologist he was a botanist he was an archaeologist and he pioneered the study of radio and microwave optics he made important contribution to the study of plants and laid the foundation of the experimental science in the indian subcontinent he was the first person to use semiconductor junctions to detect radio signals and thus demonstrated wireless communication for the first time what is more he is also probably the father of the open technology he has he made his invention and work freely available for others to further develop his reluctance for patenting his work in the legendary work were legendary another of his well known invention is the crestograph through which he measured plant response to various stimuli and he gave the hypothesis that plant also can feel pain and understand the affection this is a great philosophy all we feel that all only the human beings can feel pain and they all only the human human beings uh, uh, can understand affection but it is that boss who said no if the plants can also feel pain and understand affection and this discovery is such a discovery is nobody could think of in the world vikram sarabhai the another great man to whom we say the father of india the space program was instrumental in the setting up of the isro he successfully convinced the indian government of the space program 
he was also given the awards padam bhushan of the while everyone knows of his primary role in the establishment of isro press many of us do not know that he was also the force behind the establishment of many other indian institutes of report uh, repute particularly if you see indian institute of management ahmedabad so he was the, these people not only the scientists they were institution builder so he was a person who uh, uh, developed uh, iim ahmedabad and uh, the nehru foundation for the development dolas singh kothari as i said dolas singh kothari was a uh, great teacher of physics i had very close affiliation with dr kothari he used to live on campus his son was lakshman kothari was a professor of physics who retired few years ago so dr kothari was an outstanding physicist and educationist he worked as a reader professor head of department of physics at delhi university and he is the architect of defense science in india he was the founder of the most of the drdo labs in india and dr kothari played a crucial role in setting up ugc and ncert he is the he was a scientific advisor of minister of defense from 1948 to 61 and in there after 61 he was the appointed the chairman of university grants commission and very continuous for 12 years until 1973 He was Dr. Kothari was chairman of the Kothari Commission, Education Commission, um, during 64-66. That is called Kothari Commission, and that was the first ad hoc commission set up in India for the modernization and internalization of education in India. So these were the people. Their contribution cannot be forgotten in development of Indian science. If you talk about botany, we have a Birbal Sahni Institute in Lucknow. Who was Birbal Sahni? He was an Indian paleo botanist who studied the fossils of the Indian subcontinent. He was also a geologist who took an interest in archaeology, and his greatest contribution lies in the study of the plants of India in the present as well as the historical context. He was also elected fellow of the Royal Society in 1936, and the highest British, uh, there is the highest British scientific honor. which was awarded for the first time to any botanist and he was a founder of the paleo botanical society which established the institute of paleo, Bot paleo botany on 10 september 1946 and which was initially uh, established in the department of botany of, of university of lucknow so the universities have played a very important role in development of indian science and science for the global science we had another scientist was born in bombay salim ali salim was an ornithologist and naturalist he was among the first indians to conduct systematic bird survey across india and his bird book helped develop ornithology in the subcontinent we call him a bird man of india and he was the key figure behind the bombay natural history society after 1947 and he used his personal influence to garner government to support the uh, the organization and he was awarded the as uh, the padam vibhushan that's a common thing dr kalam with whom i have been associated very closely and i wrote his biography before uh, he was uh, uh, he took oath as a president of india dr kalam an indian scientist initially in fact i wrote my in my book that and i told dr kalam you are a technocrat not a scientist but he was really great scientist who worked as a aerospace engineer with defense research and development organization drdo and indian space research institute he started his career by as a technician in dehradun after his diploma in engineering he was not a graduate dr kalam never had a graduate degree kalam started his career by designing a small helicopter for the indian army he was also the part of inquest park committee working under vikram sarabhai 
He was interviewed by Vikram Sarabhai. He was interviewed by Professor M. G. K. Menon. Those were the great people who nurtured him. So he was a renowned space scientist, and in 1969, he was transferred to the ISRO, where he was the project director of India's first indigenous satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3. We successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in near Earth's orbit in July 1980. He also served as the 11th president, as we all know, and he looked. He always clung to. Until he died, he advocated plans to develop India into a developed nation by 2020, and he has received all awards or recognitions from the government of India. This is one of the memories we have. Uh, Dr. Kalam, Dr. G. P. Talwar, they all came to Jhansi during the convocation in 2003, I believe, and I. Kept writing about him, which I have not published yet. After his biography, which I published before he took over as president of India. Then we have another scientist, Sasi Kumar Madhusudan Chitra. Madhusudan was instrumental in setting up the Center for Excellence in Basic Science, for which he was an academic chairperson until his death. He received numerous honors during. He was a Kenyan. He was a fellow of the Third World Academy of Sciences, Royal Astronomical Society, and all three Indian science academies. He also served as the president of the Astronomical Society of India. He was the, he was also part of the Bhushan. And Chitra served on the board of trustees of J and Tata Trust and worked as an honorary executive director of Homi Baba Foundation. He unfortunately passed away in January 2021. Dr. Masim, Rodan Masim, was a, I had my personal uh, affiliation and connections with Dr. Masim. He was a great scientist, a great person. He was a Indian Sura member and was director of the CSIR National Aerospace Laboratory, NAIL, on deputation from 84 to 93 for almost um, uh, nine years, and. He was instrumental in setting up a parallel computing system, which was not conceived either to to solve several computational problems. He also offered critical support to ISRO, particularly in investigating failure of certain launch vehicles, which greatly helped in their rectification. Later, he was also a member of Indian Space Commission, and he was also awarded Padma Vibhushan as the second uh, in 2013. We have several female scientists, and uh, one of them, Dr. V. Santa. Dr. V. Santa was an Indian oncologist. She was a cancer specialist. She was well known for her efforts in making cancer treatment affordable, and she was the chairperson of the Adyar Cancer Institute in Chennai, which I have seen personally. Uh, uh, there is a great institute, uh, and she was holding several positions, including that of the director during 80 to 97. She has also contributed her efforts as a member of many national insurance committee. And Dr. Santa was elected a fellow of the National Academy of Medical Sciences, and she has received several accolades in recognition of her work, including Mega Sir Award and Padma Bhushan. So she was a great cancer specialist. We had a Karachin Walde. Dr. Karachin, the you know very simple man. And I remember when he started Himal Wadia Institute at Delhi University campus. Dr. Dr. Karasing was instrumental in the establishment of uh, several key geological institutions in India, notably Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, Central Himalayan Environmental Association, Nainital, G. B. Pant Institute of Himalayan Environment and Development, Almora, and Geology Department at Kumau University. He was elected as a fellow of all the academies in the Third World Academy of Science and Geological Society of India, Geological Society of America, Nepal, and so many other recognitions he got. His studies have greatly contributed to the understanding of the paleo geography of the region and shed light on geodynamics. Unfortunately, he passed away in September 2002. We have M. S. Narasimha, Dr. M. S. Narasimha. 
played a key role in the development of mathematics in India. He was the first chairman of National Board of Higher Mathematics. He was elected a fellow of the Royal Society, FRS. He was also a fellow of the, all the academic, three academies in India and also chairman of the French National Order of Merit and the Padma Award. And to date, he is the only Indian to win King Fajal International Prize for Science from Saudi Arabia, which he received jointly with Simon Donaldson of Imperial College. So, Dr. Narsimhan also come from um, Chennai, uh, also the um, Madras Presidency. Then we have another scientist, an administrator, to whom I pay my tribute, Dr. M. Anandrasan. Dr. M. Anandrasan was basically an engineer, educationist and science administrator. He was the chairperson of IID Kanpur and former vice chancellor of Anna University. He also served as an advisor to the government of Tamil Nadu on information technology and governance. And he was actually he was the first uh, uh, vice chairman of Tamil Nadu Council of Higher Education. He received several awards. So, Dr. Anand Krishnan, not only in science, but uh, contributed a lot for the uh, scientific administration and universities in India. He was also confirmed the commander of the National Order of Scientific Merit by the government of Brazil in 1996. Dr. was also elected as a fellow of the National Academy of Science India and the Institution of Engineers and the Indian Society of Technical Education. So these were the, some of the great persons who contributed for the development of science in India. Now we have the another one, we have Sri Kumar Banerjee. Sri Kumar Banerjee also passed away in May 2021 and I would like to put on record that Sri Kumar was the former chairperson of Adam Ecology Commission of India and the former secretary of Adam Ecology. He was well known as a metallurgist in India by training. He also served as chairman of the board of governors of IIT Kharagpur for three years and elected a fellow of all the academies in India. He received numerous recognition for his work and contribution uh, to services and he was awarded Bhattanga Award and so on and so forth. So this has, these are the, some of the scientists we lost before COVID and during COVID. I have another scientist, Nandi Bada Ratnasri. Ratnasri played a key, she played a key, important role. His contribution has been towards the preservation of the Jantra Mantra. Jantra Mantra is observatory. It was still by Raja Savai Jaisi. She and her team have been instrumental in enabling, enabling the accessibility to the general public. She firmly believed that astronomy outreach carried out at RQ Astronomy Heritage sites and through RQ Astronomy instruments had immense potential for wider communication and appreciation. Acknowledging Ratnasiri role in this, the Archaeological Service of India appointed her to the committee overseeing the restoration of Jantra Mantra in New Delhi. And Ratnasiri also worked with the National Council of Science Museum advising them on astronomy related exhibits and activities at various science centers. So unfortunately we lost Ratnasiri in May 2021. Then we had another good, I had a good friend, a scientist, Govind Saru. Govind Saru comes from UP, Thakurdwara. I had a close association, we used to meet uh, in Noble Red Conclave quite often and before that. So, Dr. Saru was a radio astronomer. He discovered the type U solar burst, a recipient of Padam Sri and Lifetime Achievement Award from the Department of Epidemiology, was a promoter of all inclusive approach to teaching science. And Dr. V.G. Bhile and Dr. Saru for five years integrated, they started five years integrated program for intensive education in science, which led to the establishment of all these ISAs. Because after Indian Institute of Science Bangalore, there was no science institutes. Now the government started five more ISAs, the Bhopal, the Mohali, the Calcutta, and so on and so forth. So Dr. Saru was instrumental in establishing these ISAs. The another dynamic 
that charismatic lady I met several times. India will recognize her talent after some times. Sakuntala Devi comes from Bangalore. I met her quite a few times. She wanted to come to Jhansi, meet the students, and unfortunately, she also died in 2013. She was an Indian mathematician, not by training. She was a writer and mental calculator. I have seen how she used to she used to see your face and then give calculations. So she was a human computer, and her talent earned her a place in 1982 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records. And the certificate for the record was given posthumously on 30 July 2020, despite Sakuntaraji achieving her world record on 18 June 1980 at Imperial College, London. Sakuntaraji was a precious child. Uh, sorry, Precox's child, and she demonstrated her arithmetic abilities at the University of Mysore without any formal education. Sakundaraji strove to simplify numerical calculations for students. She wrote a number of books in her later years, including novels as well as the text about mathematics, puzzles, and astrology. And she wrote the book The World of the Homosexuals, which is considered the first study of homosexuality in India. So these were the persons who contributed for the Indian science. We also have our friend Dr. Swami Nath. Dr. Swami Nath is a great agriculture scientist and I am really happy that he still is maintaining good health, reasonably good health according to age. He was the Director General of ICAR, he is a plant genetist, administrator and humanitarian. Swami Nath is a global leader of the Green Revolution. He has been called the main architect of green revolution in India for the leadership and role in introducing and further developing high yielding varieties of wheat and rice. And the Swaminathan's collaborative scientific efforts with Norman Borlaug is spearheading a mass movement with farmers and other scientists and backed by public policies. He saved India and Pakistan from certain famine like conditions in 1960s. His leadership as a director general of Rice Research Institute, which I visited in the Philippines, was instrumental, was instrumental in it being awarded the first World Food Prize in 1987, which is equivalent to the Nobel Prize of the highest honors in the field of agricultural science. The United Nations Environment Program has called him the father of econ economic ecology. We are really proud of him. He is still contributing to the development of science in this country, despite that. He is today 97 years old. We have another friend, inventor, Pran Thalwa, Professor G. P. Thalwa. See him. He still is. This picture was taken about a year ago in his life. We had a uh, birthday. We celebrated his birthday. The Swaminathan and Dr. Thalwa belong to the same age. So, uh, in August, we celebrated his birthday. Uh, so, Professor G. P. Tarwar is the, was a professor of biochemistry at Tony Institute of Medical Sciences and he took a project from WHO and in those days immunology was not at all uh, developed in India or in Asia. So, Professor Tarwar, that project led him to develop National Institute of Immunology, immunology in 83 to 91, he was the founding director. I have seen him working in the lab even today. This is the lab at his residence where he is standing now. Dr. Salwar basically is a chemical engineer. He developed immunotherapeutic vaccine for leprosy. The vaccine is also showing efficacy as an immunotherapeutic agent to chemotherapy in, tubercul to chemotherapy in tuberculosis and cancers. The vaccine is marketed as a Imuvac by Nasser Cadillac Pharma. He also pioneered research on immunological approaches to the contraception and invented the first birth control vaccine in the world whose safety and efficacy has been tested. He has over 500 publications to his credit and reputed journals and authored edited 10 books and monographs. He was the founding director of NII as I said. But the great thing is that when the Dr. Wa, after his superannuation in NII in 91, 
he made two houses one for director one for the himself and he was kicked out from the nii then he started his lab at his residence in uh, senic from close to the igloo and dr talwar is still working even at this age like a young student he keeps six seven student he has a guest house he has a lab he has a uh, housing for the lab staff and is still enjoying working even at this age i am really proud that we have such scientists who have contributed largely to the development of science in globally so this is the dr talwar we had a sixth world congress on nanomedical sciences and dr talwar was one of the key speakers you can see him there and the another scientist i can see but he is not indian uh, uh, the third from the right hand side he said thomas chang thomas chang is a scientist uh, at the uh, uh, in montreal uh, so thomas chang was the first person in the world who developed artificial cell in 1956 when he was a uh, dr war and thomas chang both are together with dr hasnain uh, uh, hasnain then dr war and dr chang so such scientists they have contributed globally he may not be indian he is a chinese basically so he is uh, now in montreal even at this age he has a active lab at the mcgill university then there is uh, i'll just briefly conclude there are seven defining contribution of indian science and technology after independence so i'll just briefly take few second few minutes so uh, in that as i said dr swaminathan was responsible for the green revolution dr swaminathan william god and norman block are the fathers of the green revolution as the term was given by them whereas the father of the green revolution in india is the famous scientist dr m s swaminathan or to i just told you then the other to get the wrong white revolution the white revolution was initiated by the government of india to make india a self dependent nation in the milk production and the varghese kurian the chairman and founder of the amul was the father of the white revolution in india then we have a satellite communication revolution when vikram sarabhai as a chairman of the indian national committee for space research in mid 1960s envisioned the use of satellite technology for communication remote sensing and weather prediction few people believe him because india then did not possess any capability in building a rocket or a satellite he wanted india to use the space technology for education health and rural development drugs and vaccines manufacturing india played a vital role in developing vaccine for the covid 19 but even before that in order to break the hold of the multinational corporations the central government established hindustan antibiotics limited in 1954 and then indian drugs and pharmaceuticals limited idpl with soviet assistance so we were able to develop drugs and vaccines after independence on our own then c dot and telecom revolution during uh, prime minister shri rajiv gandhi to whom we call the architect of the digital india or the father of information technology and telecom revolution in india it was under his tenure that the center for development of telematics was established in august 1984 to develop state of the art telecommunication technology and meet the needs of the indian tele uh, telecommunication network then we have it revolution and railway computerization it is also in 84 the policy providing the provision for software exports through the satellite links was approved by mr gandhi's cabinet but was announced by the government headed by rajiv gandhi on november 1994 and they have mentioned in the book the long revolution the birth of the growth of the india's it industry then there is the blue revolution there is a green revolution there is a white revolution there is a green revolution and for that green revolution as uh, the blue revolution dr hiralal choudhury and dr arun krishnan they are called as the father of the blue revolution then i just uh, this is covid time i'll take a few seconds in that because the covid 19 is currently the creating havoc on socio economic landscape of the country which is pushing them to take other forced decisions 
and this decision in post covid 19 will directly and indirectly affect multilateralism through different aspects as the multilateralism should focus on the following point to rest reestablish in the post pandemic world so what are those points the climate change the covid 19 has dethroned the biggest threats like terrorism for the nation and now problems associated with the climate change are considered as above than all and as the multilateral systems were not ready for problems like this pandemic earlier as well the risk associated with the climate change are going to be way greater and uh, as of now the world is not ready for any further resilience the loss and damage due to the climate change is going to severely affect both financial as well as the social security by many developed countries have some safety against losses occurring due to natural disasters but in case of developing countries these losses go remain uninsured this means that the, the mentioned gap between the developed and the developing states keeps on hiding the vulnerable under carpet for long but in case of the extreme situation like covid 19 pandemic all states will be pushed towards the tipping points therefore the climate risk map especially for developing nation should become a precedence for multilateralism this map will enable these countries to plan for critical susceptibilities such as coasts urban heat stress water stress crop loss and biodiversity collapse etc and look for potential approaches to ensure ensure the losses which might occur in case of stress and these approaches could also permit provinces and the national governments to apprise their actions action plans on climate change with a deeper understanding of climate risk then we never you know had a science diplomacy i was in russia for 10 days and i had a meeting with several university presidents and directors and also the president of the national academy of sciences uh, we came to the uh, after discussion we discussed with the vice chancellor you know to delhi and finally it was decided that we should establish a uh, indo russian center indo russian center of the campus of delhi university which will be funded by government of india and uh, russian government equally so in that the science diplomacy is of prime importance there are three different aspects that have been evaluated from the perspective of the role of science technology innovation in foreign policy diplomacy and international relations which are as follows the science in diplomacy means there is a science in diplomacy as well so using science and technology cooperation to improve relation between uh, sorry using scientific advice to achieve foreign policy objectives is science in diplomacy then science for diplomacy so using science and technology cooperation to improve relations between countries and diplomacy for science we have to do diplomacy in science so combining international scientific cooperation and getting foreign science and technology inputs for indigenous progress therefore considering the above points integration of science into the global politics should be a primary focus of multilateralism and this will be helpful for the states in the eastern thing relationship between the countries and their research and developmental capabilities then social infrastructure the covid 19 function as an eye opener for many countries for understanding the limits of their social infrastructure capabilities and this pandemic challenge healthcare education public facilities as well as the transportation of the kids in several different ways many emerging as well as the least developing countries were struggling to provide even beds to the covid-19 patients while several found it very difficult to manage better digital education services to their students if you look at the statistics india spends a total of 3.6% of the gdp on healthcare public and private included which is way lesser than turkey 4.2 china 5% russia 5.3% mexico 5.5% and brazil 9.2% therefore learning lesson from the past 
the country should work towards strengthening the G20 philosophy of leaving no one behind and thus supporting each other in building better social securities on ground which can further lead to multi-dimensional human development. Then the next I will speak on it is for a second innovation centricity. The one thing that was common in all points is the role of innovation in the era of COVID-19. Where it was for the mass sanitization, cashless payments, low cost ventilator, working remotely or finding a vaccine for treating coronavirus, innovation has played a salient role in mitigating the problems which could have been worse. So there is a there is no denying the fact that the world post-COVID-19 will be innovation driven. Therefore, there will be huge pressure on the countries to bring socio-economic normalcy to their citizen and they should not neglect that innovative solutions will be a way out so, will be a way out from stress caused by the COVID-19. Uh, this uh, reaching to the end of my lecture. This is the institute pre-started or I conceived in 1990 and it was inaugurated by the Prime Minister in nine, March 1991. So we were the pioneering in providing biomedical education and research to the country. And this was the first institute to start MSc and MSc PhD combined degree program in biomedical sciences and I'm happy to place in the court that this a medical center for biomedical research has played a very vital role in solving many health related problems which I can discuss when there is a separate lecture on science. The, uh, as I said, the Delhi University is also in the process of establishing Institute of Nanomedical Sciences, which is the need of the hour. We have already, we have recently signed the MOU with the uh, Sechinova University, which is uh, the largest medical university of the world, having 18,000 medical students. And also with the Russian Academy of Sciences, its president, Alexander Sergi, I met him in Moscow, and we signed an MOU. And uh, the, the other upper picture also showing the MOU I signed with Sergi, uh, University in the field of nanomedical science. And uh, on the right hand side, the lady uh, is the uh, rector of the university. So these are the steps we have to take to develop science and keeping in view what is the need of the hour. So these are the, uh, I could give you the, in brief, what is our contribution for the development of the global science, how our scientists played important role after 1947 and how we have to proceed further for developing science at a global level. Thank you very much.